men these different abilities for the perfecting of the saints so that we can grow, so that we can be mature in the faith for the work of the ministry. I'm going to deal with that in the, in, the, in the second part because when you don't grow, you don't work. And the reason you won't grow because you ain't here. The reason why you ain't here because you're doing your own thing. Let's just narrow it down to what it is. You're not here because you don't want to be here. Amen. You don't come because you don't want to come. You can put all them excuses, well, I had to do this and I had to do that and I was just so tired. I just wasn't feeling too well. And, oh, I mean, I just had so much going on. And, and you know, but it is, it, it is extremely interesting that when you're lying flat on your back and when there are tubes going in and out of your flesh, that suddenly the priorities of life start to be set in order. Mm -hmm. And all those things you thought that you could not do without okay. suddenly are not even a factor. Mm -hmm. Those things that you thought you had to do which kept you from serving God not even relevant to the situation that you're dealing with. Right, sir. God will never take second place to anything or anybody in your life. Right. And you will never grow spiritually putting him second to anything and anybody in your life. Right, sir. So I want to encourage you this morning to make your calling and your election sure. Make up in your mind this morning that you want to be further along in your spiritual growth than you are right now. When you look back this time next year and see where you are now and measure where you are at that point if the Lord lets you live to see that then you ought to see yourself further along in your spirit. You ought to know more Bible. You ought to have more scriptures committed to memory. You ought to be able to teach people better because of your constant and diligent study. So make up in your mind right now that you want to grow spiritually. And the only way you're going to attain that is you have to be here so you can get what you need. Lord's will, next time we come together, we're going to not only talk about spiritual growth, but spiritual guidance. Yes. The reason why we don't get the growth is because we ain't being guided right. And tonight, we're starting a series entitled, Is the Bible Your Guide? Mm. Is it? Good. Is the Bible your guide? Is the Bible the road map that you travel in this life? Or do you just ride and see where you're going to end up? You know, some of us do that. They get in the car and they ride. Where you going? I don't know, Jerry. Just thought I'd just ride around. Got no destination. <laughs> really no point of origination. Just ride. Maybe you ain't gonna never make it to heaven. Just ride. You better put out this road map and chart your course. Yeah. If you want to end up where God is, all of this life is going to come. You see how hot it is outside? Yeah. They say it's supposed to be 100 plus degrees out there. Baby, that ain't even a drop in the bucket. No, sir. Compared to hell. <laughs> so when you go out there sweating, come on. Oh, child, the show is hot out here. That ought to be a motivating factor. Yes. If you can't stand to sweat, how you going to stand to burn? Hello. Make up in your mind this morning that you want more for your life than what you've been given or allowing the devil to give you in your life. Make up in your mind that you want to really grow spiritually and to accomplish that. I need to be here every time these doors are open so I can be fed, so I can become stronger, so I can become better, so I can become wiser. I can be the child that God will look down upon and say, well, please. If you're here this morning and you're not God's child, you need to become one by believing that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, John 8, 24. By repenting of your sins, Luke 13, 3. Mm -hmm. By confessing the fact that he is God's Son, Romans 10, 9, and 10. And then being baptized in water for the remission of your sins, Acts 2, 38. If you do that, God himself will add you to the church 
And now once you're baptized, your journey just began. Jesus told his disciples in Matthew 28, verses 18 through 20, to baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, teaching them, and then teaching, teach them, baptize them, and then teach them again. Once you baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, then teach them again. Your teaching don't stop before you baptize. Baptism ain't the end of it. You rise about the water. Yes, that's a wonderful feeling to know God has washed all your sins away. Now, now that he's washed them away, you've got to keep them away. Amen. Okay. Can't do that staying at home. Can't do that going to the ball game. Teach children. Don't put nothing before God. God comes first. You're going to really be God's child when you get on, when you're applying for the job. Tell them I'm a child of God. I must serve God on Sunday at least. And they will respect. They, if they have any sense at all, they will want you. Because you got some standards. You got some morality about you. You got something about you that is going to help them realize that you are a dependable individual. And so don't, don't allow them to take from you what they're ultimately going to need back from you. Because your devotion to God is going to also help your devotion to your employer. In Ephesians chapter 6, Paul deals with the servants. and tells them to be obedient to their masters. Sometimes you feel like on the job that you're under the hand of a master. Even if that's the case, he tells you how to deal with it as a child of God. God is able to do anything that you need done in your life. I hope and pray this morning that there are those of us who are already members of the body who are making a decision to renew our covenant with God. I hope and pray that there are those of us who are already a part of the body who are making a decision to be better in our attendance so that we can grow and become what God would have us to become. If you're here this morning, and you need to be saved, don't you stay in that seat. When we stand up, you start walking. Do like Sister Benson did last Sunday. She walked on down this aisle, gave God a life. She knew it was time. And don't you know it's time? It's time. So we want you to come as we together stand and as we sing. Yes, yes.